hello. Hello. Who is this? If you tell me your name, I'll tell you mine. <laughs> I don't think so. What's that noise? Popcorn. You're making popcorn? Well, I'm getting ready to watch a video. Really? What? Oh, well, just some scary movie. You like scary movies? Uh-huh. You never told me your name. Why do you want to know my name? Because I want to know who I'm looking at. Scares you. Traps you. Fear. Don't trust anyone. Ever. Feels good to get things out in the open. And scream about them. <laughs> it is a film about a group of kids that uh, all love scary movies who are then put in a situation where they are being preyed on by an anonymous killer. They find themselves unwillingly uh, sometimes in those very cliché situations they sort of thought were so clever and, and fun to watch when they're watching scary movies. Hello? Hello, Sydney. You like scary movies? What's the point? They're all the same. Some stupid killer stalking some big-breasted girl who can't act who's always running up the stairs when she should be going out the front door. It's insulting. There are certain rules that one must abide by in order to successfully survive a scary movie. Number one, you can never have sex. Sex uh, equals yes. death. Don't have sex, you die. That, that would pretty much be Wes Craven's message to Youth of America. Abstinence. Key. Never, ever, ever under any circumstances say, I'll be right back. Because you won't be back. I'm getting another beer. You want one? Yeah, sure. I'll be right back. Oh! It goes from being sort of funny as you recognize classic film situations to terrifying when you see that it's really happening. And uh, kind of baffling and intriguing because all of these things become sort of woven up in a single net of who is the killer, and uh, which is kind of an impenetrable uh, mystery, as it turns out in this film. The police are always off track. If they'd watch prom night, they'd save time. There's a formula to it. A very simple formula. Everybody's a suspect. The first 30 pages of the script were probably like the most exciting 30 pages that I'd ever read. I freaked out. And I put it down. And then I finished the next day during the light. So who are you? The question isn't who am I? The question is where am I? So where are you? Your front porch. Why would you be calling from my front porch? That's the original part. Oh, yeah? Well, I call you bluff. Uncovering the dark side of yourself and confronting it and chasing it away. That's what the movie's been about to me. <laughs> I was definitely dealing with a, a lot of depth in the character. When you try and find the, those levels, when you find a character, you don't want to just go with what's on the page. I do a lot of um, fighting with a couple of the characters in the film. Man, that was a good punch. Nev, you nailed it. Looks like we've got a serial killer on our hands. Well, serial killer's not really accurate. Gotta knock off a couple more to get that title. Well, we can hope, can't we? <laughs> I've always been a Wes Craven fan. I'm, t I'm scared of him. <laughs> Wes Craven was sitting in the, the lobby of Miramax, and I knew I recognized, as soon as I got off the elevator, I was like, that's Wes Craven, that's Wes Craven. And I had someone come up and they said, Wes, Kevin, Kevin, Wes. He went, Kevin Williamson? I said, yeah, he goes, he goes, I read your script. It was really scary. And I thought, I can lay down and die. Well, it was funny because, you know, I mean, my name's even mentioned. The killer's still out there. Don't go there, Sam. You're starting to sound like some West Carpenter flick or something. Um, Nightmare on Elm Street. Is that the one where the guy had knives for fingers? Yeah, Freddy Krueger. Freddy, that's right. I like that movie. It was scary. Well, well the first one was, but the rest sucked. I kind of wanted to take that out, you know. I did not write that line. With the amalgamation of Kevin's script and Wes's direction, I knew you couldn't go wrong because Wes would bring Kevin's brilliance to life in the most 
graceful way. It's like, you know, you're a junkie. You want that, you know, you want that scary feeling. And a lot of people, you know, it's like a drug. You want more. You want to go into a dark theater, have the lights turn out, and just there's something about being scared out of your wits that has always appealed to me, and I think it appeals to everybody. They go to scary movies because they already have certain fears. And the movie brings it out in a way that's fun because you know you're not going to be hurt. If something has been exercised, some, some terrible tension has been relieved momentarily. And so it performs some sort of uh, arcane service to the psyche. Ready, Ed? Action! Anything else you want, Wes Craven, director of this major motion picture? No. No. That's good, Mary Jane. Yes, sir. David, <laughs> um, a couple things. I'm, I'm just keeping an eye on things. This is the first time I'm checking things out because you're checking out the party. And uh, oh. and then you, you do the jump first, and then you take your head off. Ready? You come in. And Go. Scared. <laughs> I can't do it. If Cameron does not be Tony will be back this far. Yeah, one match. Ask for favor, please. I'll send you a copy. One more. When you see him do the oh shit and look and then come back out like that, I think that curiosity should really pays around. Okay. Right, rather so rather than looking back to his home. Okay. Like, what is it? Oh. So just keep We're looking. Well, once once he goes out and looks, just keep looking like he's out. going to help. Then he comes back and looks. Then you look, right? Because he's looking. Right. And then he goes back, and you're like, okay, like, where's he going? What's going on? Right? No, you're just turning back. Oh. So, but the first time you don't want me to look out when he looks out. Sure. Oh, okay. But when he goes out the second time, don't he just turn back. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Roll, sir. We're rolling. Rolling. Mark it. Hey, only 106, I can take five markers. Set here. Okay, roll video. Roll. Lots of animation right here. Oh, shit, behind roll. you, kid! No. Behind you! No. Oh, shit. What? No. 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 Ready? Ready and action! Okay. Uh, yeah!
Strange things like uh, *Repulsion* and *The Tenant*. I love Hitchcock films. Um, I love uh, *Night of the Living Dead*. I like *Texas Chainsaw Massacre*. I love just about anything Cronenberg did uh, when he was doing that, uh, those kind of genre films. Um, *Alien*. You know, I, I have very eclectic tastes. *The Shining* was pretty freaky. Um, you know that you could call that a horror film because it's really disturbing. <laughs> I, I'd say probably *The Shining*. I also saw one called *The Changeling* that really freaked me out. Because it was about, you know, spirits. And when it comes to spirits, you know, I have more of a belief in spirits. Or it seems more real. Whatever happened to Baby Jane is my favorite scary movie. My favorite scary movie would probably be um, Rosemary's Baby. Definitely Psycho. Yeah. Friday the 13th, you know, the original. And I remember going with my friends and I just thought, oh my god. I mean, it was just, it was great. It was quite the ride. Salem's Lot. Straw Dogs. I thought it was, you know, a clockwork orange, that kind of scary movie, not as intense as, you know, as Wes is. A different kind of scary movie. I like old movies like Gaslight and things like that. I find those more like the psychological thrillers, like kind of more terrifying. A long time ago, and I'm dating myself, but there was a film, I think, with Vincent Price called 13 Ghosts, and that was scary. Terror Train scared the hell out of me. Clown masks coming at me with a knife. I just remember being just terrified by just movies like The Birds, or, um, you know, Exorcist, you know, things like that. The movie that I remember upsetting me the most was The Exorcist, I think. I mean, I, I'm not a smoker, but I remember I smoked seven cigarettes in a row when I watched that movie and threw up immediately afterwards. Probably one of the greatest impact, which is kind of cool with this, was Halloween. Seeing some of the, the scenes cut together here, I can remember, you know, being in high school and going to see that movie and the impact, you know, that just sitting on the edge of my seat. And, and that's, why, that's why you wanted to take girls to those kind of movies, you know, because I can just imagine, you know, my teenage equal nowadays, get her and she gets real scared and she might want to hold hands, you know, and all that stuff, and they get scared. <laughs> that's, why, that's another reason I like those, those scary movies. Burnt offerings. I still think about the color of that swimming pool and that little boy was under there and that man was getting killed. It just gives me shivers. Nightmare on the street, probably. I mean, I don't... I'm gonna push it, but 
<laughs> I um, watched Halloween when I was 10 years old, and it was the scariest movie I ever saw in my life. In fact, it's my favorite movie of all time. And it is the movie that is responsible for me being in the business of writing and being in the whole movie industry. So, I mean, for most people, it's Citizen Kane, Lawrence Arabia, but for me, it's Halloween. I think it's a great release of tension. Scary movies, somehow, um, they take you on a roller coaster ride. And they kind of address fears that you already have. And, you know, I don't think people like to be scared. So that's not why they go to scary movies. They go to scary movies because they already have certain fears. And the movie brings it out in a way that's fun because you know you, you're not going to be hurt. You know probably that the person that you're most identifying with, the hero or heroine, is going to survive and probably triumph. So, um, and, you, and you go with friends. So you come out sort of laughing and exhilarated and happy and... Um, Beyond that, it's a mystery. But I just know that audiences coming out of really scary films, the scarier the film are, the happier they seem to be. Everybody has a different form of excitement. Some people like to laugh, some like to cry, some like to be scared. And it's very obvious from all of the horror films that people love to be scared. And it's just something in them that on a 95 basis they don't get that kind of adrenaline. I think that there's a real visceral kind of relationship between the horror film and the horror fanatic. I mean, you go and you sit in the seat and you're checking out the film and you get a rush. There's an adrenaline rush. I, mean, I think kids go to amusement parks. I think they like to test their fear and survive and come out and happy and alive. And I think it's just a matter of that. People who like to go on Ferris wheels or roller coasters, same thing. They like to go to movies and scream their you know, guts out. Because people want to be scared. They're... Uh scary and they like to be shocked because people have regular jobs and they don't like see murders during the day in their life and they want to be shocked and jolted. We all have an evil side in us. There's always, you know, some kind of evil that lurks within our souls that, you know, we never get to act out. So to go and see a film and be entertained by those emotions and, and things that we never actually come through with in our lives is kind of a trip, you know. To watch someone else do that and watch someone else be evil <laughs> and get off on it, you know? <laughs> I think that's why. You want to be on a roller coaster ride. You want to go into a dark theater, have the lights turn out, and just there's something about being scared out of your wits that has always appealed to me, and I think it appeals to everybody. Even though, yeah, it's not everyone's cup of tea, but there's something about being, you get the old adrenaline, adrenaline rush and just start shaking and screaming, and then you walk out of the theater and you know you're just taken for a ride. Hey, it's Lisa here with more on horror. The Exorcist was the first horror film to be nominated for a Best Picture Oscar. Now, the horror genre has never gotten much love from the Academy, though there still seems to be a bias against scary movies during awards season. The Exorcist earned 10 Oscar nominations in 1974, including Best Supporting Actress nod for Linda Blair, who was just 15 years old at the time. Now, do you like my shirt? You can get one in the description below.